Thank you, Pastor. Everybody say praise the Lord. Tonight, God will touch you. He will heal you. He will deliver you. You have a testimony tonight. I have a testimony tonight. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you because of your love. And thank you because you manifest your power in every life. We're asking tonight you touch everyone. Heal your people. Save your people. Turn every life around. Let your power be demonstrated in every life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. For. In Jesus' name we pray. You are blessed in Jesus' name. You can see that in the blessing of the Lord. Tonight we are reading from Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8 verse 22. And he cometh to Bethsaida. And they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. They brought this blind man and they wanted Christ to touch him. Like you are here tonight. Somebody brought you. Or maybe you came by yourself. And your plea and your prayer is that the Lord will touch you tonight. Touch you. He will touch you tonight. And so they said, please touch him. Why? He was blind. And they wanted him to see. You are blind. Tonight you will see. You are lame. Tonight you rise up and walk. Tonight you are powerless. The power of the blood of Christ and the cross of Christ will touch you tonight. Salvation comes to you. Forgiveness comes to you. Deliverance comes to you. Because then tonight is the night of that divine touch in your life. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, and he took the blind man by the hand. He loved him. And therefore he held him. He wanted to be in fellowship with him. The Lord loves you. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever that's your name right there. Whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Tonight he is holding your hand. And he's taking you to the place of your salvation and healing tonight in Jesus' name. And he led him out of the town. Out of the town. And sometimes you wonder some of the things that Jesus did. Everything Jesus did has a meaning. Everything Jesus did had a purpose. He took him by the hand. He led him out. Out of the town. There were many people that had eyes. They thought they were seen. But they didn't have sight. They thought they had sight. But they didn't have insight. They didn't know why they were here on earth. They didn't know why they were living. 
They pointed at the blind man. He is blind. And Jesus said to those religious people, if you only knew you were blind, you should have seen. He took him out of the people that had sight, but he didn't have insight. The people that were religious, they didn't have faith. And so he led him out of the town. And when he had speech on his eyes, he put his hands upon him. He touched him. He asked him if he saw out. Wonderful Jesus. He didn't assume. He knew he had the power. He touched the man's eyes. And he said, before you go, tell me, what do you see? How do you see? How bright is your sight? That's why we interview people. That's why we ask them. Have you got a touch of the Lord? Okay, tell us what you have got. Verse 24. In verse 24, and he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. He said, I am different. I didn't see anything before. But now I look up. I see men, they're like trees. But before, because they are walking, that's how I knew they must be men. When God touches you, you must look, you must search, you must find out, am I perfectly whole? And so the Lord touched him for the first time. A change happened. I can see, but not bright enough. I can see, but not perfect. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, and he put his hands again, second time, upon his eyes. Second touch. Double touch. And made him look up. And he was restored and he saw every man clearly. That's why we're here tonight. That's why you are here tonight. The transforming power of the Savior's double touch. Transforming power. Perfecting power. Demonstrative power of the Savior's double touch. Touch him the first time. He saw but not perfectly. Tonight, you will see perfectly. You will rise perfectly. You will be saved perfectly. Transforming power. When Christ touches any heart, touches any life, when Christ touches anyone, is the Savior's double touch that makes you perfect. Look at number one here. Number one, we're looking at the petition and the prayer for the Savior's touch. They came and made petition before the Lord. They wanted the Savior to touch him. My desire tonight, my petition tonight, my prayer tonight, is that the Lord will touch you. Tonight, it's like I'm by your side there. I love you. I appreciate you. And I'm going to hold your hand by what I say. I say, come, come. There's healing for you, come. The salvation for you, come. I'll bring you to Jesus. And once I bring you to Jesus, 
Stay there. Stay there. It will touch you. Number two, the privilege and power of a single touch. The privilege and power of a single touch. You see, there are different kinds of people. You don't have to be like them. There are people that have a single touch. And that single touch clears everything. Other people have a second touch. In fact, in the case of Naaman, he had to go into River Jordan not only two times, seven times. You don't have to be like that. A single touch will clear your problem away. The privilege and the power of a single touch. Number three is the perfection of performance by or at the second touch. The performance of the Lord that becomes perfect in your life. At the second touch. And we're looking at number one now. Number one is the petition and the prayer for the Savior's touch. And look at that in uh, Mark chapter 8 verse 22. And he comes to Bethsaida. And he bring a blind man unto him. And besought him to touch the blind man. Look at the first part of verse 23. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. The man was brought to Christ. And Jesus held his hand and was walking out of the town. Walking out of the town. You must come out before you come in. He must take your hand and lead you out before he takes you in. He must take you out of that place and that town of darkness. The town of blindness. All the people walking about in spiritual blindness and he didn't know they were blind. He must take you out of the town of unbelief. He must take you out of all those people that will have evil, blind, dark influence on you. Everything Jesus did at the purpose. Out. Through. In. He takes you out of Egypt. So he can take you into Canaan. He takes you out of your sin. And he takes you out of the influence of those sinners all around before he can take you into the salvation of the Lord. And he holds your hand. He said, I am the light of the world. And where you are is a city of darkness. Spiritual darkness. Normal, average, natural darkness. They were dark in their behavior. They were dark in their understanding. They were dark as to the power and the measure of the greatness of Christ. By their language, they will have a bad influence on the man. And he took him out. Tonight the Lord will take you out. Out from the influence of the people of darkness in your life. The people that smile but they have 
hatred in the heart. The people that bring that brought the man to Christ, but in their heart they didn't want him to see as well as they were seen. They didn't want him to be as happy as they were. As independent and self-reliant as they were. They wanted him to be subservient and leaning, kneeling down to them. Give me a penny. Give me two pence. They wanted him to be totally paralyzed, impotent, unable to do anything without them. And the Lord led, led him out. It was the Savior's touch he wanted. You want the Savior's touch tonight, don't you? I said you want the Savior's touch tonight, don't you? He leads you out. So he can lead you in. Look at Second Corinthians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 17. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them. Christ is not in darkness. Come out of darkness. Christ is not in idol worship. Come out. Christ is not among those people, dishonest people that go to church on Sunday and from Monday to Saturday, they are in the idol shrine. Come out from among them. Christ is not in the midst of that nightclub that they will dance and drink and do all that in the night until 5 a.m. And then on Sunday 8 a.m. they brush up and they go to church. Christ is not there. Come out. Christ is not among the people that carry the Bible on Sunday. And then they have the masquerade Sunday afternoon. Come out from among them. You must come out before you come in. You come out of Egypt. You come out of darkness. You come out of your sin. And thank God you are coming out. The miracle will come upon you. The Lord will touch your heart. The Lord will turn you around. Wherefore come out from among them. And be ye separate. That's what the Lord did. He took the man's hand and he took him out and separated him from unbelieving influence. Separated him from fiendish, uh, fiendish friend. That is friends that really internalized their foes. Took him out and separated him. What did the man know? He knew nothing. He saw nothing. He was a blind man. He didn't even see the faces of the people. He didn't see their heart. He didn't know their intention. He didn't know their inward hatred against him. What do you know? You only see the faces of people. You don't know their heart. You don't know their intention. You don't know the curse they have in their heart against you. You don't know how they are expecting. He will never see. He will never get a miracle. He will never get salvation. He will never get anything. He will never be happy here on earth or 
in the great beyond. What do you know? Come out from among them. And so God says, Wherefore come out from among them. And be ye separate, says the Lord. You know, it would have been difficult for that man. All the money he would ever get, he got from the people. He was blind, he could not work. He could not find or provide for himself. And it's attachment to them that made him have any hope at all. But he didn't allow him to rely on God. They said, we're your provider. We're the all in all for you. And yet they couldn't supply a sight. And the Lord is telling they cannot supply your salvation. The people that tie you down, tie you to themselves, make you totally dependent on them. What can they do for you? Come out from among them and be separate says the Lord and touch not the unclean thing if the Lord is going to touch you with his clean hand you touch not the unclean thing the many things you'll find in life that if you touch it will make you unclean the serpent was talking to Eve. Eve was the first woman in the whole world. And the devil said, why don't you eat this? And Eve replied, God has said, we must not eat it and neither must we touch it. My friend, if you are not going to eat, what do you touch? If you are not going to eat, what do you take? If you are not going to eat, what are you looking at? Eat what are you examining each? Don't eat, don't touch. And the thing that brought Eve and Adam and the whole world from grace to grass is touching, taking, and eating. And the Lord is saying, He brings you out, He separates you, and He says, Touch not the unclean thing. Whatever will bring unclean thoughts in your mind or in the mind of the person you are touching, touch not the unclean thing. Whatever you will draw you to the alcohol, and then you begin to look at it, don't touch, so you will not take. He says, touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. He took him out. He separated him. And before you will touch him, the Lord will touch you tonight. And before he touches you, you must look around. What's the unclean thing I've been touching? And touch not that unclean thing anymore. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, And I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Look at point number two here. Point number two is the privilege and power of a single touch. And we're coming back to Mark chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 23. And it says, when he has speech on his eyes, he put forth his hands upon him and he asked him if he saw 
ought. Now, if you look at that word ought, if you put in before that ought, it will become not. Before you saw not. You saw nothing. Now, the first touch, the single touch came. Do you see more than nothing? Do you see aught? Is there any change? He asked him if he saw aught. In verse 24, in verse 24, he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. There are stories we read in the Bible. There are experiences of others that we see. And we don't identify with everybody. You see, the Bible tells the story of many people. And you don't identify with everybody. The Bible talks about Pharaoh. And then he said, who is that God? I don't go and see it beside Pharaoh and identify with him. The Bible speaks about Judas Iscariot. A story is told in the Bible. I don't go and see it beside Judas and identify with him. The New Testament speak about demons, so was where Paul in fellowship and in fe a fellow worker who went away. I don't go and sit behind him, beside him, and identify with him. The, the Bible speaks about this man, a single touch. And he said, I only see men as trees walking. I don't go and sit beside him. See, every time I pray, I will only have a partial answer. No, he had his own light to demonstrate. And look at other people, a single touch. A single touch. A single touch. In Matthew chapter 14. I'm looking at verse 35. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased. And look at verse 36. In verse 36, and they besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Those are other people. A single touch made them perfectly whole. And look at uh, chapter 20 of Matthew. And we're reading from verse 30. Matthew chapter 20, verse 30. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, they cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. Verse 31. In verse 31, and the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, the son of David. Verse 32. It says, And Jesus stood still and called them and said, Watch. 
well ye that I shall do unto you. Verse 33. And they say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. Verse 34. And so Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Single touch. Touch their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight. Immediately their eyes received sight. And they followed him. There are people that need second touch. There are other people here tonight. A single touch will make you perfectly whole. A single touch will open your blind eyes. A single touch will make you rise up and walk. A single touch will cleanse all your sins away. A single touch will bring perfect salvation, perfect freedom unto you tonight. Some need a double touch. Other people, they are coming for the first time and a single touch will destroy the works of the devil in your life. One touch will remove the hand of Satan from your body. And all your life that the devil is plucking out like flower and separating you from the stem, from the vine, and then makes your life dry and twists your life, the Lord will knock off the hand of the devil from your life. A single touch, a single touch for you, my brother, for you, my sister, for you. You will do it tonight. We're looking at point number three. In point number three, the perfection of performance at the second touch. It doesn't matter whether you've got the first touch or you're just coming for the single touch tonight. Tonight is your transforming touch. It's your healing touch. It's your saving touch. You. Me. Me. You will not miss your miracle. Look at Mark chapter 8 verse 25. After that, he puts his hands again upon his eyes. Put his hands again upon his eyes. Put his hands again upon your eyes. Tonight, blind eyes will open. The lame will rise up and walk. He will put his hands in your ear. Those deaf ears will hear again. Your tongue that is impaired in speaking, he'll put his invisible hands. You speak out clearly tonight. Any disease in your skin, any disease in your brain, any disease in your system, the Lord will touch you tonight. Tonight, tonight, me, where are you? He will touch you tonight. You must get well. You must get saved. The joy of the Lord, the joy of receiving miracle must be your heart today. 
that he put his hands again upon his eyes and he made him to look up and he was restored he was restored I'm looking for the person he was restored he was restored the Lord does not want you to remain in anything that puts you in the dungeon, in the prison, in sorrow, in sadness, in sin. You must come up. He was restored. I am restored. He must, you must be restored. Perfect health. Perfect sight. Perfect joint. You will march. You will get up. That wheelchair will not remain with you. You will not remain in that wheelchair. Up, up, up. It's for you tonight. It was restored. And he saw every man clearly. That lot of light said tonight, your blind eyes will open, you look up, you'll see everything clearly. There's some good, good people here tonight. You are hearing as I say, Amen, Amen. But now, after the final Amen, you look around, you'll see them clearly. All, all that diabetes, you know, you have five minutes, ten minutes here, and then instead of staying to hear the word of God, the thing is about to come up, so you get up and you run, diabetes will vanish away. Your cancer will dry up. The touch of God will come upon you tonight. Weakness will vanish away. And everything will be perfect and clear. Everything will be perfect and clear. The touch of the Lord is coming upon you tonight. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 15. It says, and in this confidence, I was minded to come unto you. In this confidence tonight, I come to you. That ye might have a second benefit. That ye might have a second benefit. You got a miracle before, another miracle is coming today. You got salvation before, sanctification is coming on the way. You got sanctification before, the power, baptism in the Holy Ghost is coming on the way. You got deliverance from brain problem before. Another perfect king of the rest of your body is coming on the way. Tonight is single touch. Tonight is second touch. Salvation. Freedom. Joy. Life. Happiness. Forgiveness. Coming your way. Where are you? It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. Double miracle. Miracle of salvation. Miracle of healing. Salvation is coming right now. Forgiveness of your sin is coming right now. It's bowed and eyes closed. You want all your sins to be forgiven. You want the joy of salvation. You want the assurance. He has taken all my sins away. Raise up that good hand there. 
the Lord bless those hands who are raising up. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. You are, bese you are beseeching the Lord. They besought him. They pleaded with him. You are pleading with the Lord. Oh Lord, I want forgiveness. I want salvation. That's why you are raising up your hand. And you can you stand up if you are raising up your hand. Welcome. Welcome into your salvation. Welcome into your forgiveness. Welcome into your freedom. Raise up the hand and, and stand up. And say, Lord, I want you to touch my heart. I want you to take away my guilt. Take away my burden. Take away my condemnation. Tell him, tell him. And he will do it immediately. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. I'm going to pray with you now. You're raising up your hand, you're standing up. Here at the Alpha location in Douala, Cameroon. There online, over the radio, over the television, you're doing the same thing and salvation is coming to you now. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, you have said, whosoever comes to you, you will not cast out. You forgive everyone that comes. You set everyone free. And you save every soul that is asking for salvation. Do it, Lord. Save them. Forgive them. Set them free. And give them the power to go and live in newness of life. Thank you, Lord. We know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, I am saved. I am saved. Because I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, He has saved me and set me free. Keep on standing. Uh, uh, um, counselors, members of the choir, ushers, workers, they are there around you. We'll call on our officiating minister tonight to help us at this time. Then I will come back. Your healing is coming on the way. Praise the Lord. Please remain standing. Our counselors are close to you there. Uh, they give you a form to fill. Please complete the form correctly. Give your name correctly. Your contact correctly. Where you are living. Give appropriate description of how we can get in touch with you. You have the joy of the Lord in your heart now. Pardon has been given for your sins. Grace from the Lord has been deposited in your life. And uh, the church will want to have contact with you so that you can be established in the kingdom. So give all necessary information that will give allowance for a contact with you. Give us your telephone numbers. 
Give us the popular name you are called around where you live. Every detail necessary that will make the church to connect with you, please supply on the paper given to you. Please uh, let all our counselors move front to where all these our brethren are. If nobody is coming close to your place where you are standing, you can raise your hand, beckon on them, they will be there. Si quelqu'un n'est pas près de toi, pourtant tu es debout, alors lève la main, quelqu'un se rapprochera de toi. And once we finish in one section, let's help those other side where they have many people. Une fois que nous avons terminé d'un côté, alors aidons l'autre côté où il y a plusieurs personnes. If you are watching online, please we want you to look at the base or the lower part of your player. And you will see a link there where information about your present Christian experience can be supplied. The link is gckhq.org forward flash connect gckhq dot org forward flash connect Please get in touch with us as you give your name and other details requires in the, are required in the form that will be uh, discovered in that link. If you just give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, as you connect to this program on radio or television, you can as well give us the information necessary about you regarding your conversion today. You can send SMS or chat on WhatsApp. Please take note of this number so that your message can be sent across. And it will be the job of the church to get across to you immediately. Plus two, three, four, nine, one, five, three, book, four, that's four, 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 nine, two, six, three. I repeat that number for you to send SMS or a chat through WhatsApp. Plus two, three, four. 915-444-9263. Please quickly do that and send your message across. Your name and other details that will make us to get across to you. And all those who have given their life to the Lord Jesus Christ here tonight, and those brethren, I mean, our brothers and sisters who came to the Lord on Thursday and then yesterday and today. There will be a special meeting by 3 o'clock at the uh, building behind this stage tomorrow. It's tag lunch hour with Jesus. It's a forum where we get together and fellowship can be shared with you. Please be there tomorrow by 3 p.m.
And then in our various churches, second day of June, we'll be having Believer's Banquet with all the converts of this GCK edition of May. It will delight you that all of us will be gathering together in our various churches in various nations by 3 p.m. second day of June. Uh, you need to find out where this meeting will hold in your locality. Uh, for us here in Cameroon, further details will be given to us as to this convert rally. Amen. 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 Those of us who are seated there, begin to pray. Begin to talk to the Lord. God wants to touch you tonight. And there is nothing possible for God to do in your life tonight. Whatever needs a touch, be talking to God that tonight, one touch, a single touch, and all your problems will be gone. So close your eyes and begin to pray. Pray. Open your heart to God. That the end of the ministration and an amen is said. One touch. Your problem is gone tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please, uh, if you are finished canceling to my left hand side here. Can you please indicate? All right. How about the back of that same row? A swim left. Thank you. Front here, we have seen you. At the middle here. At the back. At the back. Clear back. Okay. At the back, at this extreme right. I cannot see any sign there. At the back to my swim right. Please, if you are finished in the cage. Please, if you are standing there and you have given your life to Christ and nobody has spoken to you, please raise your hand. Let's see you clearly now. Please, there are some hands over there. There are some hands over there. Please, our counselors, you get near to them. Please, let's take down all their details. Quickly reach out to them. At the extreme uh, uh, right, please, let's get across to them. Quickly, quickly. If you are there, you have given your life to Christ and the counselors have not been... Uh, I've not got across to you. Please raise your hand properly so that it can come uh, to make contact with you. Swim right. Swim right. Amen. Amen. I can't hear you. We will now rise up as the man of God will be coming to bring the power of the Lord to bear upon our lives. Tonight is miracle night. Welcome, sir. Amen. 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 Miracle night. Healing night. Deliverance night. For you. You must be healed tonight. Deliver tonight. Miracle in your life tonight. You know that the touch of the Lord is coming upon you now. Raise up your hand. Lay the other hand where you have the challenge. You will leave the wheelchair. The wheelchair will leave you. You will leave your crutches and the, the crutches will leave you. And all those problems you had had, everything is coming out of your life. 
when you hear the final amen, the touch has come. Single touch. Or well, maybe if you were here before you got a touch before and you had something partial tonight, final second touch. God is ready to touch you now. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, you will never fail. Your touch will never fail. Your killing power will never fail. Lord, we bring everyone before you. Asking that you will touch everyone. Touch and heal your people in Jesus' name. Touch those blind eyes. They will open their eyes and have miracle sight. Touch the brain. Take all the demons. Cast them away in Jesus' name. Touch the swelling in their body. And all the swelling come out in Jesus' name. Incurable problem. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Also, be healed in Jesus' name. Diabetes, be healed in Jesus' name. High blood pressure, be healed in Jesus' name. Asthma, be healed in Jesus' name. That fibroid come out in Jesus' name. Hunchback vanish away in Jesus' name. Hearing problem, I pray that those ears will be open now in Jesus' name. And speech impairment speak out when in Jesus' name. Here and everywhere. To the right, to the left, and the back, in the front. Miracle healing upon your life. Over the radio, over the television, in congregations, everywhere online. Miracle in Jesus' name. Perfection of performance. Perform your, uh, your performance in every life. Perfect it in Jesus' name. You will rise up and walk. You'll open your eyes and see. Your ear will hear sound. The swelling has vanished away. Lord, confirmation of miracle healing in every life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord has touched you. You got it. You got it. Now you will do what you have not been able to do before. 